everybody. You are listening to Eve Harrow on Rejuvenation for the Land of Israel Network. And I'm sitting in Los Angeles. It is February 3rd, 2020, the eighth day of Shot 5780. And I am here visiting my dad, but I also get to see old friend Scott Jacobs. So thanks for joining me today, Scott. Eve, thanks for coming by. And, and in the short time that you have for uh, giving us the opportunity to speak both on radio and on video. That's right, which is some opportunity. It means we both had to wear lipstick today. I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> just going to get you in trouble from the beginning. So normally I meet you when like things are hopping and bopping, like in Washington, D.C., or at who APAC. knows what, at APAC or other events, um, because you produce YouTube, produ executive producer of YouTube. Maybe yeah, tell my listeners yeah, exactly. what YouTube is. Uh, YouTube is, uh, uh, I guess you'd call it a, a Jewish perspective, um, Middle East and uh, global anti-Semitism focused uh, a publishing agency, publishing news about uh, the condition of the Jewish people, the state of anti-Semitism around the world and the safety of Israel and, wow. and the global That's it. Middle East conflict. Just that. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, it's brought in. To bit off just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's brought in that way. I started off working for CBS in New York. Oh, um, my, my. Yeah. And you was remember CBS the way CBS it is Network. now or? No, it wasn't, of course. Okay. So when was this? Because yeah, I don't yeah. think people realize the change that's happened in the media over the decades. Yeah. Well, you remember when Bob Simon ran the, uh, the, foreign, aid, the, the, yeah. the foreign Bureau? Yes, in, they do. In, in Israel. That was when you started around in I came in 88. So, yeah. I think he was still there. Weren't just you before. there in 79? I was there for school. I was there for a year in school, 79, 80, but I actually right. made Aliyah in 88. Okay. Yeah. So it was at the time uh, uh, Dan Raviv was there. Mm -hmm. Bob Simon ran the, 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 the agency. Um, but I got hired in New York on uh, the CBS Morning News, as a matter of fact. I worked there for a short period of time. I worked at Channel 11 in New York, WPIX TV. Um, and then I got called out to help found MTV. Really? Yeah. The music station. The music channel, yeah. Cool, the music channel. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's why you ended it back in LA? No, it was in New York City oh, also. It was in New York, okay. Yeah. Um, but uh, I've always been a news junkie and uh, working in the UK around uh, the late 80s, mid 90s, um, I discovered that there was a tremendous bias in the way that Israel was depicted on trusted outlets like the BBC, mm -hmm. ITV, Associated right. Press, and Reuters. Right. And so the, the condition of the bias, the media bias against Israel, and also against America in the UK. Mm -hmm. And of course, the UK is where uh, the Associated Press is headquartered. Right. Um, Reuters is in, is in uh, London and in Paris. Uh, the bias was documented by Zev uh, Chaffetz in his book, Double Vision, mm -hmm. and then reconfirmed by Stephanie Gutman in The Other War, which is uh, essentially the media war um, on the part of the agencies and, and the, the outlets, the international outlets, that they were looking for a particular storyline. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a negative storyline towards Israel pro-Palestinian, pro-Arab, pro-Muslim. Mm -hmm. But not yet anti-Semitic, right? I mean, we can circle back to that later. Well. But, you know, now it's so, I mean, things have really moved even into that realm. But then it was more just like a political bias. What do you think? I'm asking you a question. I think anti-Israelism is, uh, uh, anti-Zionism is an uh, outgrowth mm -hmm. of anti-Semitism. Okay. Right, based on a resentment of the Jews rooted in Christianity, mm -hmm. but also manifested in uh, progressivism, right. leftism, liberalism, uh, and the Palestinians or the, the Muslim world who imported the Nazi uh, uh, communications uh, department, Johan von Leer, mm -hmm. uh, Egyptian President Nasser, started uh, politicizing what the Nazis did for Europe they politicized it for the Middle East. Right. Well, there's a lot that's been written about why the Europeans tend to be more pro-Arab than Israel. Uh, we're paying the price for their colonialism. I mean, you could definitely say that when it comes to the UK. Colonialism is terrible. Now that the, the British Empire is gone, now we can start yelling at other people for being what they were, and it doesn't apply to Israel anyway. Um, 
But not only that, the, that we did what the Nazis did. So, you know, we're the new Nazis, so they don't have to feel so bad for what they did in Europe to the Jews because we just went over and did it to other people. So there's a lot of different reasons, really a very perfect storm yeah. for hating Israel. But, but I think it's important for my listeners to realize that you're talking about decades ago, there's this mm. built-in bias, meaning mm. that two generations have grown up not even realizing yeah. that they have just in, been infused with an mm -hmm. anti-Israel mm -hmm. sentiment right. on what they're looking at right. is news, which it, should be not editorialized, but it was already for a long time. Absolutely right. Yeah. yeah their view of reality of the Middle East, the role of Israel and, and, and at the Jewish people in supporting the Jewish state has been skewed now since then, literally for uh, more than a generation. This is such a hard thing to, to understand is that sources that we feel are um, neutral or not at all. I was trying to explain to somebody the other day who was talking to me about something they learned on Wikipedia. I said, you realize Wikipedia is just as good as the last person who uploaded that page. This is not the Encyclopedia Britannica. That's right. That's right. And even then that's going to be skewed. Yes. All right, Wikipedia is open to everybody to put in their narrative and their agenda. Yes. And a lot of people are taking information in now thinking that it's coming from a very neutral place, which is probably impossible yeah. anyway, yeah. and forming their opinions based on that. And when it comes to Israel and Jews, yeah. most of it's negative. Things are much worse now that the internet is open. Mm -hmm. There are uh, websites that don't, don't, sorry, that don't have accountability. They don't have gatekeepers. And... Uh, but even if they did, like you said, the BBC, the BBC had no gatekeepers or all the gatekeepers are also anti-Israel. Right. Well, exactly. Their point of view, the, 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 the center view of where the balance ought to be has been so far skewed against Israel already mm -hmm. that it's uh, people are not recognizing people are not aware that that it needs to be that they're watching something skewed and that it needs to be moved or find an, an alternate uh, news source. And that's why I started YouTube. So that was my next question, because most of us, many of us have realized that something was wrong for a long time, but didn't have the ability to change it. So the ability to change it meant changing the channel. And that was as far as it went. Yeah. So I don't have to listen to BBC and I don't have to listen to NPR and I can find alternate places to get my information. But you went a step further than that, given your skill set, And you decided yeah. to actually create an alternative network. Uh, yes, yes. And by the way, I uh, in the early 90s, 92, 93, when things were getting bad for the Jews in London, um, I went to the to leaders of the Jewish community to explain that they needed their own outlet, uh, which is, uh, I guess, I-24 has, has come around to, to, to take... In Israel. Uh, mm -hmm. From Israel, to, to take a, a position just to be a, 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 a middle-of-the-road uh, honest reporting from the, mm -hmm. from the Middle East uh, that they could develop when uh, multi-channel television exploded in the UK. Freeview, right. cable, satellite. Um, well, look, way back when you had like Voice of America. Yeah. You know, when you only had radio and you had people behind the Iron Curtain or behind, and, you know, in the Arab world who knew they were being lied to but didn't know where the truth was. You had some very brave people for a long time putting out things like that. So... You know, this, the need has been seen like for, to, to, yeah. to get the truth out for a long time. But as you said, with the yeah. internet, there are so many sources now. So what do you do? How do you know where to go? So what did the Jews, what did the Jewish leadership in London say to you? They said, uh, we don't need any Americans to tell us how to run uh, British culture, mm -hmm. which of course, you know, is the downfall of lots of industries. And yes. so in the vacuum, the absence of having a, uh, they didn't have a Fox News at the time. Even uh, Sky TV, which is owned by the uh, by News Corp, um, uh, was not focusing on a, 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 a correct, accurate depiction of Middle East news. Um, and so, and the Jewish community, and, and, and I think uh, uh, the, the British public, particularly uh, the Christians from Britain, who are concerned about Israel's fate mm -hmm. have never gotten a fair view. Um, and it hasn't been uh, like channels do where you uh, stumble across it just uh, through flipping channels right. where, where people would see. So the British public lacked this and the pro-Muslim, pro-immigrant uh, mm -hmm. uh, reportage has swarmed, has, has overcome 
right. the, uh, overcome Jews and uh, the, the, the image of anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism in, in France has grown from 3% to 18% mm -hmm. commensurate to the influx of Muslims. So you did, I mean, you, it's obvious why you ended up with the Corbyn, and I'm thinking kudos to the British for at least pulling, at least temporarily, who knows, pulling themselves back from the brink and realizing that the country can't go that way. Although I think the anti-Corbyn vote, a lot had to do with Brexit and not necessarily his feelings about Jews, but let's mm -hmm. give some credit. That's fine. Mm -hmm. I don't really care why mm -hmm. he didn't become the Prime Minister of England. I'm just glad that he didn't. Mm -hmm. But it could be a temporary reprieve. So where did you go with this? So the, so the Jewish leadership there says no. Yeah, so and I, I, I came back to the U.S. and spoke to uh, some uh, a prominent uh, uh, activists, uh, donors here in the U.S. saying, uh, you know, there's a, a, a tidal wave coming mm -hmm. and it's already on the shores of, the, of Europe. European Jewry is in trouble uh, and it's coming this way. Wow. Um, and I felt a bit like Jabotinsky. Mm -hmm. yeah. I felt like uh, it was falling on deaf ears. Um, and, and, and in fact, it did. Uh, and so in response to the growing anti-Semitism, uh, Stand With Us was formed mm -hmm. as an activist group, but there was never a, a real independent communication source, either on radio right. or on media, uh, yeah. media source. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And in Los Angeles, unfortunately, the Jewish journal was really skewed. Uh, Although and, you had David been, Teresa. He came out very bravely. Only, only recently, mm -hmm. but it, it still isn't what you would expect. It isn't what you would get from the Jewish press, mm -hmm. for instance, as, as a newspaper, you know, a, a true Jewish uh, perspective, pro-Zionist. Right. Which some yeah. people would then say is propaganda going the other way. Well, if, if it's a Jewish paper, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's called right. the Jewish Journal. But now we're going on this really slippery slope of what does it mean to be Jewish and a whole lot of people who call themselves progressive and liberals because they've changed the meaning of progressive yeah. and liberal yeah. are also Jewish, but they are coming out for things that you and I would find nauseating at best, like the J Streeters and people like that who are working really to undermine the state of Israel. Right. Um, Dan yeah. Dyker, apparently, someone told me, I didn't hear it myself, uh, just interviewed Jeremy Ben-Ami from J Street who said something about assimilation is a great thing. So, um, and I think Dan was like, he kind of just moved along with it. But when, when I heard about that, I was like, wow. So then why is J Street even involved when it comes to anybody and their opinions on Israel? If they think that Judaism isn't important, then a Jewish state isn't important. So why should we be listening to anything they say about Israel whatsoever? I mean, exactly. with that one sentence, exactly. he totally damned himself and his organization. Not that it took much. Yeah. So yeah, why exactly. though... Do you think that, I mean, why is there this, because there's definitely the money, the money comes for other things in order, because it's a big investment to set up some kind of media station. See, I'm talking to you as somebody who was trying to do this on the other side of the pond. Mm -hmm. I mean, my guys here, you know, on the Land of Israel Network, Yishai, Ari, Jeremy, yes. all of us, Josh, yes. Gill, this is what we've been doing. You know, Winky, who interviewed me last week, we have been tilting at this windmill for decades from the mm -hmm. other side, mm -hmm. from in Israel, because sure. this is life or death. Yeah. This is yeah. not... And the work that you did at Arad Sheva was really uh, seminal in establishing that there could be another point of view that right. there, and that and there, there's a, a reliable point of view. Yes. Exactly. But there wasn't something like this in the United States. Mm -hmm. YouTube was the first. In fact, YouTube started putting video up on Google video before YouTube existed. Wow. For instance. Okay. Right. So why haven't you gotten really out there? Well, because Los Angeles is a very liberal town. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's, a, there's a, a gap between um, what liberals want to hear about the Palestinians and mm -hmm. what they're willing to support mm -hmm. and the Orthodox who really support a strong Israel right. who, who care about uh, mass media. Mm -hmm. Many of the Orthodox people who subscribe to YouTube don't own televisions. Oh, so that's not very helpful. Well, they but don't how care about, about Christians. I mean, there are many Christians. I work with them all the time. Many yeah. of us do who yeah. really love Israel yeah. and really even without an agenda. There's some people who say, no, there's an agenda. There are Christians who love Israel because they know it's the right thing and they know that God's hand is in this and mm -hmm. that's all they need to hear. Yeah. And they're amazing people on every level. Yes. Um, where are, do they get, do they subscribe to you too? I, you know, are I they? would say that, uh, that Christians in the same way that Christians comprise more than 50% of tourism to Israel, mm -hmm. Christian, Christians also uh, uh, comprise not not more than half, but a, a significant part of the viewership mm -hmm. for their support 
and their defense, regardless of their motives, okay. but their interest in the fate of Israel and the fate of the West. Because mm -hmm. there are some people who realize that, it, that it's tied together. The fate of Israel is yeah. the fate of the West. It's just not some like yeah. sidebar. Right. Okay. The way right. the Jews go is eventually the way the Christians go. And I hope yeah. that that's pretty clear to people. Uh, and not even on a religious level, but on the jihadists and the dominoes that they're intending to push. So right. Israel's the first domino, but there's a whole lot that will fall after that. And as you said, Europe is probably already halfway down. So yeah. what do we do to save America? So what do you do? Who, whom do you interview? How do you get your information out? Well, look, the good thing about Los Angeles is we're kind of the, the alternate coast for Israeli politicians and luminaries who are coming to raise funds. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah. So uh, if someone will make a trip over, uh, Danny Ayalon, he'll stop in New York. Maybe he'll stop in Chicago and he'll stop in mm -hmm. Los Angeles. So a lot of Israelis in Los Angeles. A lot, a lot of expats. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. The second largest uh, after New York. Mm -hmm. um, so there are a lot of uh, Israelis who are here. But right. also there, there are, are uh, concerned Zionists, both Jewish and Christian, mm -hmm. in Los Angeles. So um, YouTube has featured... Uh, Israeli luminaries, and I'll say from a political perspective, like uh, like Danny Ayalon and uh, Ron Nangising, mm -hmm. for instance, but also uh, from a religious political perspective, like uh, a Rabbi Benny Ayalon, whom I know you have a long history with. Right, which is going to be long. I mean, he passed away, so that history is long gone. He was an amazing person. Yeah. Yeah, and, and so what? At the time of the disengagement, Jutu was very active. Um, ironically, Chaim Silberstein, who, was, mm -hmm. who came with came with Benny. Right, I Chaim interviewed him a few months ago. He's the one for, to remind my listeners whose daughter was shot and lost her baby, and and uh, and he runs an organization called Keep Jerusalem, which has a very brilliant plan on how to you know get Jerusalem much healthier in mm -hmm. many ways, mm -hmm. economically and housing. And, yeah. Yeah, but also we Michael Oren. Michael Sorry, Oren. Michael, mm -hmm. Michael Oren, uh, when he was not an ambassador, when mm -hmm. he was just a Georgetown University professor. Right. Um, and also uh, uh, ambassadors from the U.S. So, for mm -hmm. example, uh, Ambassador Dan Shapiro, U.S. Mm -hmm. ambassador to Israel. Or U.S. Ambassador to Israel, uh, Ron Dre uh, Dermer, Dermer, the current ambassador. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, whom I asked, um, how can you trust... The the Obama administration negotiate on behalf of Israel with Iran what is that? and be able to trust it. Well, he was a new diplomat at the time, so, so natu he naturally says, he said, we well, don't really have a choice. Maybe you should circle back to him and see what he says now. <laughs> <laughs> we are, speaking about circling back, we also did a, a, a big story with uh, uh, the, what they call the brave Israeli kid. When there was a demonstration outside the uh, Israeli consulate on a Memorial Day mm -hmm. 10 years ago. Um, there were, because it was Memorial Day, uh, refuse fascism as it's known now, or the Answer Coalition held a big anti-Israel uh, protest during the, uh, the Israeli boarding of the Mavi, 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 Mavi Marmara. Mavi Marmara, oh, the yeah. flotilla yeah. That, that was coming to cause a lot of problems. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and there were no Jews who came to counter-protest until one brave Israeli kid showed up wearing an IDF t-shirt and, and tzitzis. Um, and uh, and Jutu was the only uh, pro-Jewish media outlet there. To film it? Wow. Yeah, yeah, and virtually changed his life. Mm -hmm. Changed his life because he wasn't able to... Uh, uh, to go to Israel because his parents were divorced, and suddenly uh, yeshivas starting off started offering him full scholarships. Right, for his bravery. Yeah, which, but good for him. Yeah, good so him. so that put us on the map, mm -hmm. kind of internationally. Uh, Israeli TV channels started carrying our news story. Right. Um, do you do feature stories in addition to hot news when it happens or interviewing people? Um, do you do like you have yeah, yeah, long, well, longer features that you put out where you have the yeah. time to sit and edit and then put out something? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm working, on, I'm working on one right now on, on a, a reunion between uh, the refuse Nick uh, Yosef Begun, oh, wow. who, who was incarcerated for the longest amount of time. By the time. Soviet Union. Yeah. The Jews weren't allowed to leave the Soviet Union, right? Right, right. And, uh, and a reunion with those in the 1970s early 70s uh, who demonstrated 
and wrote letters wow. and lobbied that would include with me. lobbied. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a story you're very familiar with. Very. I was one of those. Probably yeah. my first foray into activism. A little it, bit here in I Los know. Angeles. Here in Los Angeles. I mentioned it, I think, on my show last week. I wore Silva Zalmanson on my bra bracelet till she got out. Mm -hmm. um, there, was a, there was a very big group in L.A. that were very active in the Free Soviet Jury Movement. It was very nice. Yeah. And in fact, one who was, was active, Zev Yaroslavsky, mm -hmm. Well, uh, wound up mayor. Yeah, wound up being the equivalent of mayor, the right. head of the LA City Council, right, right. a board of supervisors, um, and so Zev is in this reunion. Mm -hmm. um, cool. Uh, Where's Rabbi it Chaim Seidler Feller is in the reunion. Where's it going to be shown? It's going to be shown on YouTube. But it, Seidler Feller from Hillel, yeah. isn't he known as not exactly like they like say he doesn't share my political opinions? The, put it that way. Put it this way. Those who went into careers in uh, the Jewish community and Jew mm -hmm. were Jewish activists there in the 70s, both in uh, New York, in L.A., and in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So you'll find people who were, they were young at the time, they hadn't picked, I mean, at, at the and time. And then they picked a direction. Yeah. When, when Golda Meir said, hey, uh, the, the, the group who've been, who have uh, tried to hijack a Russian plane to escape, had been sentenced to death sentences. Mm -hmm. There were protests around the world, Paris, London, Moscow, well, and, right. and throughout the U.S. So right. it, it became a That was apolitical. That was just Jewish. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Non-sectarian. Right. Yeah. Yeah. As opposed to today, where every there are so many situations where you're not going to find people coming. There are very few things that are just, that everyone would agree on from the left to the right. It's become so much more polarized, I find. What do you think about that? Do well, you think I, there could be one issue that everybody would get hysterical about at this point? Um, you know, well, like maybe an planets. earthquake. Yeah, but like the, yeah, okay, like a physical thing. If the, you know, what they call them, the Kung flu, that's the joke, uh, you know, hit Israel, everybody would run to, God forbid, to help. But I'm saying, like, you know, the Trump deal of the century, some people are totally for it, some people are virulently against it. Yeah. There's no, doesn't seem to be. Yeah. It's not bringing people together. Right, right. And I think uh, identity politics has taken such a large position in people's minds that mm -hmm. even, if, even if there were a war that involved yeah, Israel. Yeah, I'm thinking if Hezbollah starts raining missiles down on Israel from southern Lebanon, I bet you there'd still be some people who'd say, well, if Israel had just done this or that, then maybe they wouldn't be attacking. That's right, right. That, That's right. Yeah, wow, that makes me sad to yeah. say that. Yeah, people are not thinking that there may be a choice in fighting Iran with no nuclear weapons today. Yeah. And of course, this uh, movie 1917, and uh, uh, we haven't uh, seen that uh, yet. I heard Dunkirk, it's great. Uh, right. Churchill, uh, Czechoslovakian diplomats appear on YouTube, explaining uh, appeasing tyranny. And they would know. They would know. Neville Chamberlain and the black umbrella. Yes, they yeah. would most definitely know. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. it, it, they were also our of, only friends. A lot of people don't realize the Czech Republic until 1967, mm -hmm. when we won the Six Day War, and all of a sudden everybody realized we might have some value. Mm -hmm. It was very much alone in the world, except for the Czechs, who helped us out. So they deserve mm -hmm. a little kudo there. And we should we it. should learn the, the lesson of the Czech Republic. That, uh, that appeasing uh, mm -hmm. tyrants, especially those who rise to power using anti-Semitism. Yeah. Uh, eventually, you're going to, it'll cost more to fight them later. Yeah. Right. And it's not just for the Jewish people. No, but people like kicking cans down the road because maybe it won't happen on their turf or on their, yeah. you know, under their realm or whatever it is, and they won't have to pay the price for it. And that's yeah. really, and that's also yeah. the sign of a lack of leadership, which is yeah. something I think we're seeing today. And to a great extent. Yeah, that, that's true. Mm -hmm. and, and there's anti-Semitism visiting uh, New York uh, during right. Hanukkah. Tremendous anti-Semitism. Every day, from what yeah. we're hearing. Most people just aren't hearing it. Yeah. But, yeah. It, but because so much of that anti those anti-Semitic acts came from blacks and, his, and a couple of Hispanics, mm -hmm. even though it was uh, over a dozen acts of, of violence against Orthodox Jews during the month, there are still people who don't want to know or don't want to, to uh, prosecute it because um, it wasn't white supremacist. Hmm. And so it's politically incorrect. Including the ADL, right. for instance, who only came in because they were forced to, that, well, that they couldn't cover. The ADL has downplayed Muslim anti-Semitism and black anti-Semitism for years, especially under Jonathan Goldblatt. It's coming from the far right, not the sure. left. Sure, exactly, wow. exactly. That, that, I think, is racism, actually. You know, like, I was totally against Obama and his policies. I couldn't care less what the color of his skin was. 
It wasn't because he was black. He happened to be black. He was a terrible president who happened to be black, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I didn't dislike him because of the color of his skin. To me, mm -hmm. that's irrelevant. Someone's gender is the color of their skin. Their religion is irrelevant. It's mm -hmm. what their policies are mm -hmm. that matters. But you have to be so careful now. You can't say anything against the minority because then you're a phobic on that minority. Mm -hmm. And you're not really listening to what they're saying. So they can get yeah. away with murder, which is what happens. The interesting thing about interactive media, I used to be a, a pioneer of interactive media in the 80s in 90s, two-way TV, and of course the internet. I was at the uh, MIT Media Lab and uh, Massachusetts College of Art pioneering things like uh, uh, online forums, mm -hmm. nonlinear news with online forums and communicating. Well, we don't even think about how all that was developed. It's just like so obvious. And here yeah. you're one of the guys who took yeah. brought that out. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we all thought, gee, if we put the, the uh, email address of the reporter then it would be great because then you could feed back. And now if you look at the Twitter feeds of reporters, it's filled with so much uh, smearing. Right. Uh, uncivil. Yes. And now, of course, it's, it's the rigor to have uh, a way back, a way to, to respond to mm -hmm. a reporter. I think many reporters either uh, ignore or have to uh, tone down the importance because they can't possibly re re respond to everything. Andrew Breitbart tried that and ultimately gave him a heart attack. Really? He had a terrible heart condition because he would argue with everyone. Mm -hmm. And uh, YouTube uh, is available in three forms. There's the YouTube uh, website. Which uh, is? W which is uh, YouTube.info, spelled J-E-W, tube.info, okay. or J-O-O, tube.tv. Uh, there's the Facebook feed, which is spelled J-O-O tube, uh, which offers both original and curated articles on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And there's also the YouTube channel of YouTube spelled J-E-W tube. Do people uh, have to subscribe? Can they just go in? Well, yeah, of course you can just go in, mm -hmm. but if you want to uh, save articles or share them, I mean, you have to log in to YouTube, right, right, for instance, subscribe. but you, you can subscribe. I encourage people. I invite people to subscribe to the website mm -hmm. and also to the Facebook page, the Twitter feed, uh, and, and the YouTube channel. But the interesting thing about the YouTube channel is that it gets viewers from all over the world. And this is something that... Uh, That's that, the internet. That, right, the advantage that, and disadvantage of the internet. Correct. Correct. So, so YouTube functions in the same way that uh, cable used to where someone could stumble across Joel, Joel Osteen or uh, an evangelist, televangelist that, that just through flipping channels, people now get served if, if and I put keywords in like anti-Israel and so it attracts people who are against Israel. Mm -hmm. um, but the, what I'm leading up to is that it, uh, it attracts comments from people who have points of view that most Jews around the world have never heard before. So even those who live in suburban Maryland or suburban uh, Los Angeles or suburban Chicago, if they don't encounter anti-Semitism personally themselves, it doesn't get depicted on the mainstream. Uh, a place to find it is either in anti-Semitic videos around YouTube right. or in the comments from people who come from places, by the way, it, it's not only Pakistan uh, Iran, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Jordan, and Egypt, the countries yeah. that have the highest reportage of, of, of anti-Semitic sentiments in the, in the culture, well, we, we also have our neighbors. That's right. Neighbors who you would never know. Belgium also. I mean, all over Europe, but definitely here in the United States. Certainly. But people like to blind themselves to things. Look, like in Israel right now, so we, just getting back to this virus, right? So, we know that the coronavirus is out there and they stopped they stopped the flights from, from China and some of the workers aren't coming back. But I landed in LAX yesterday, which by the way, I was shocked at what a miserably inefficient airport it is. Like mm. absolutely shocked. I was, Ben Gurion is the model of efficiency compared to what's happening airport. in Israel. Yeah. I'm in and out of that airport in 40 minutes. It's amazing. Uh -huh. Landed here in LA, total mess, no lines, nobody knew what was going on. And I was shocked at how many people were wearing masks. Because when also- you say, this, you say, you mean the surgical masks? The surgical masks. Um, also because this is the gateway to the Pacific. So I guess maybe you have more people yeah. coming in over there. Yeah. But so 
unless you're taking yourself out of your little safety space and seeing things, this is, there's a point to what I'm saying here, um, you're not going to know what's really mm-hmm. out there. So most people are very comfortable not realizing how bad anti-Semitism is. And if you're mm-hmm. not seeing it in your neighborhood and all your neighbors are nice, then why should you go and purposely put yourself in the muck to find out what a, what a horrible place the world really is, which is mm-hmm. essentially what you're telling people that they need to do. I'm going to tell people that they need to do that also. Are you listening, people? Because you have to know what reality is. Yes. You can't just hide yourself and say, because I live in this lovely neighborhood and everyone's kind, the world must be a fabulous place. Yeah. You can do that for only so long, and then the world will come and find you or your children or somebody. Right. And also, right. assuming that you're a good person, you need to fight it. Yes. Yeah. It, 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 Hello. It, it, this is a theme uh-huh. my listeners are sick uh-huh. of hearing already. Uh-huh. What are you doing to get rid of the bad guys today? What have you done today to make the world a better place? Absolutely. I believe that people should, who are supportive of Israel or who people who are opposed to anti-Semitism or racism. Of, or who love America and the West. Sure. People should That's go, good too. People should be going online, especially uh, onto YouTube, and challenging the detractors. Mm-hmm. Because well, do you think they'll make a difference? I think it makes a difference when, when a, a person who's uh, independent is coming to learn and they watch a, a video, for mm-hmm. instance, of a particular point of view, or just like any a, a newspaper article. Very often the comments are more enlightened Co- than cogent, the... Or, yes. or, or, or will add something or will contradict something mm-hmm. with a point. And so the, 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 the comments like discuss... Uh, these, it, it becomes part of the reading experience. Similarly with a, a video, there are comments, of course, on the, uh, if you're watching it on your phone, you'll have to scroll down past the next suggested right. video right. Uh, thumbnails, but there are, there's a whole uh, argument going on down there. Oh, yeah. And the Jews are notably absent from defending their own culture, hmm. from defending their own point of view. And so even Jews who consider themselves, well... I write a check to the ADL or to uh, uh, to the JNF, or mm. you know, I, I'm support, supportive of Israel and I'm against anti-Semitism. Well, I'm planting trees in Israel, so I don't have to go and get down in the muck. And That's venture. right. It, well, it's, it, but it isn't muck. You know, uh, you, yeah. you you don't have to register. Uh, you don't have to uh, use your own name. You also don't have to use four-letter words. You can actually keep it sane and exactly and intellectual. Exactly. And, and, <laughs> and in the denial of uh, the denial of uh, of Israel's legitimacy. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are, it, it, there, there's a vacuum just waiting for people to come and contradict the lies, the liars that Israel stole Palestinian land, Israel has no rights, that the Jews are colonialists, all of that, for example, or that the Jews are elitists. So if someone handed you a million bucks tomorrow, uh-huh. Scott, I listened to your interview with Eve. I, I love what you're doing. How can we make you more effective? What would you do? Oh, gee, that's a tough one. That's, yeah, this this interview, by the way, was not pre-planned. Like, there's no questions here, obviously. That's a tough but, one because even I-24, which is not ubiquitously available, mm-hmm. but, it, but it, it's available, for example, on ATTU-verse, and it's available mm-hmm. on uh, 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 Cablevision, now called Altria. I mean, not called... I was uh, suppo- this is a sore point. I was supposed to... to and I, I'm still supposed to take that. They have a tourism section, like a show where they take people around Israel. And I'm mm-hmm. supposed to... Mm-hmm. He's been chasing me for a while, the poor guy, and I keep being too busy yeah. to take people out to Western Binyamin and show them some of the sites. So one day I'll be on I-24. But yeah, even I-24... Even I-24 yeah. it, um, is not... Uh, a, a, a strong enough oppor- has it infiltrated into the market as <clears throat> it should. Me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no. What I'm saying is, even their editorial perspective is not strong enough. I agree. From especially that which is produced in the United States mm-hmm. in terms of of, yeah. uh, of defending. Uh, Everybody's afraid to offend somebody. Like it's so, or somebody said to me about something. I, I forget what it was exactly. Something that was pro Israel. They said, "Well, it should have been more balanced." I said, "Why?" Why does our stuff always have to be balanced? Why can't we come out and say the truth as we know it? There's plenty, the other side has plenty of opportunity to show their side. Somehow everybody yeah. expects that anything, yeah. anything that we do on, let's call it the right, for lack of a better term, nationalistic, whatever it is, we have to show both sides. No, I don't feel that I have to show both sides. I'm going to show my side or the side of my of my interviewees, yeah, which is yeah. sometimes agree with me and sometimes right. don't, which is right. totally great. Right. But I'm, you know, I don't have to sit and, and sit, sit, you know, here and say that, well, I think a Palestinian state would be just the most amazing thing because that's just a lie. 
And if you, if you feel that way, there are plenty of other sources you can go to who will try and convince you of that because another bloodthirsty failed state mm -hmm. is definitely going to be an asset to the world. Yes. Okay, if you believe that way, go right ahead. You're not going to hear it here. Yes, yeah. But, but there's this, yeah, this yeah. fear or this got to water it so down. To, to compete with I-24 takes more than a million dollars. Mm -hmm. But to compete online, um, more and more people are, are uh, using their uh, OTT over-the-top access to watching programming. So, for instance, uh, JBS, formerly known as Shalom TV, mm -hmm. is uh, is available on Roku and Amazon Fire as well as is cable. Okay. And so, with a million dollars, uh, YouTube would expand our staff from uh, two people mm -hmm. to a few more because uh, we're overwhelmed and backlogged with the amount of stories that we filmed that we can get out there. Really, and also then to to be able to extend onto Amazon, Roku, Apple TV, right? Um, extend your reach to the millions of people out there. Who yeah, are just getting fed one steady stream. Exactly. Of exactly. the other side. Exactly, because so much of uh, a, a, a true story can't be depicted in a minute and a half like they are on right. on standard TV news reports. Yeah, and so uh, YouTube has programming which they call lean back. In other words, you can watch it on the couch. It's 10, mm. 15, 20, 30 minutes oh long. Oh my God, that long? Okay, I'm teasing. <laughs> well, it's, it's television. No, it's perfect though. Yeah. I mean, that's what we do here on our podcast. It's something short that people yes. can go running with, listen to their car and their commute to work. Or as yeah. one lady writes to me, I never clean my toilets without listening to you, which I love. So yeah. So she meant it in a nice way. Uh, she meant it in a totally nice way. And that's the way I took it. But I'm just saying like something, you know, substantial, not 90 seconds, but... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, not a documentary feature either that's going to be 12, 20 hours. Right, Although right. that you could do too, you know. Well, and also a short form for mobile. Mm -hmm. For mobile distribution, we, you know, we would have, we'd be able to hire a separate editor to do more compact right. reportage because it's only getting worse yes. for, for the Jewish people. Uh, and <sighs> uh, and, and anti-Semitism, unfortunately, in, in here we are at the beginning of 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in fact, we've had uh, a rash of uh, terror uh, telecasts from shuls around the city of Los Angeles. Yeah, you had the uh, Persian synagogue in Beverly Hills. Well, the Persian, where Persian synagogue, which, 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 which was li likely so. put on, on the map by uh, this movement of First Amendment auditors. Uh, who go around and uh, reveal the security vulnerabilities in the synagogues. Huh. Where the closed circuit cameras are, where they aren't, where, how, where the doors are. How can they do that? Well, uh, That's just inviting terror in by well, exposing where the weaknesses well, are? Well, because they're anti-Semites who go around and do it. Oh, my anti -Semites God. Anti-Semites telecast it and these, uh, and these tele live casts. Can you imagine that happened in your personal house? Like someone cased your house and said, oh, they usually leave that bathroom window open? Uh -huh. So go in and kill the teenage that's daughter? Ex that's exactly what they do. Oh my they, God, I, I didn't know this. And they come around the La Brea and, uh, and Pico corridors, uh, humiliating Jews on the street and exposing the security vulnerabilities. And uh, lo and behold, Nessa, coincidentally... Uh, that synagogue that I just mentioned. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, got ransacked by uh, a visitor from Philadelphia who must have seen it on on uh, YouTube and came in a ransacked and desecrated the Torahs. There's, a, there's two things going on here. One is that freedom of information has to have a limit when it comes to exposing people's weaknesses. Two is that there are people who wake up in the morning and think about how they can hurt other people. Like that's what they do, which I know I'm sounding incredibly naive. Like what the heck is wrong with you? You live in Israel. Like, hello, don't you understand that? But I'm still sitting with what you just said. Like they just got information and went in to desecrate Torah scrolls and mm -hmm. destroy synagogue. There was right. no positive element here. You know, sometimes you destroy something like archaeology. In order to uncover something, you have to destroy something else, the, the upper layer. That's how I think, because I just, I read a lot about archaeological discoveries. And that's a decision that you have to make to dig and to uncover is to sometimes destroy. But this is destroying and hurting just to destroy and hurt. There's no well, good side here. Well, you know, since... Uh... Since the early Christians invented Christianity as a way to distinguish themselves and separate themselves from the biblical Jews, mm -hmm. um, there's been resentment from the Christians to say, hey, we're not Jews. 
and, okay. the, and, and the Jews are bad and we're not bad. And of course, uh, through the Middle Ages, mm -hmm. through the Middle Ages, we experienced those uh, because the Jews were uh, literate mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in positions of handling money as money but changes. That's all they would let us do. Right. <laughs> Uh, so there's been a resentment of of people who uh, uh, who, who see others going back to uh, Joseph's brothers. Yeah, but I'm going to sit and defend some of the Christians that I know here, but I'm also going to give them something to do, which is many of Christians that I know don't ascribe to that anymore, are very well aware of the evil that was done to Jews in the name of their religion. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and also have gone back to the Bible and understood that that's a shared source for all of us mm -hmm. and are even keeping biblical holidays and understanding the value of that book. And so I'm going to say, and I've said it before to their faces, not just virtually, is that it's their responsibility if they feel that Christianity has a bad name because of mm -hmm. the people you just described, mm -hmm. it's their responsibility to go and, and fix their own house. Yeah. Um, just like... There are Jews that I know that I am appalled at their behavior, yeah. but it's my responsibility to try and get my co-religionists to understand the yeah. danger that they're putting us all in. Yeah. And I think within each sector, um, and, and now look, I don't want Christians telling the Jews what to do because there's a dining room table also. But I um, also feel that there's Christians that need to fix their own house. This, by the way, is a conversation I have with Muslims as well, because there's some really great Muslims out there. Mm -hmm. But Islam in general mm -hmm. is portrayed, and perhaps justifiably so, as a jihadist, you know, want to kill everybody religion. And I have mm -hmm. to know mm -hmm. Muslims who are not like that. Mm -hmm. But I can't sit in front of a group of Muslim children and say, why are you blowing yourselves up for Allah? Okay, their own mothers and their, the people within right. their own religion right. have to do that. So right. there's different areas of responsibility, I think, here uh -huh. in the world. Uh -huh. And we all, but we have to take responsibility, especially if yeah. there's something we deeply believe in. Yeah, yeah. So J Jews can't stop Christian anti-Semitism. Christians up, need to stop Christian anti-Semitism. Yeah. Yes, that's right. That's 100% right. Yeah. But we can expose the level of it because they may not be aware. Right. And then say, okay, guys, now you know. So what are you yeah. doing about it? Yeah. 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 And, exactly. and, and so much of that anti-Semitism becomes manifested in uh, progressivism. Yes. Yes, it does. Yeah. And so you, you, we see that in, mm -hmm. the, in the Presbyterian Church, for example. Right, right. Uh, and we see, and also see it. And movements. Mm -hmm. and, and, we, and we see it uh, in Democrat administrations in uh, cities around the country. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, when the Nessa Temple got ransacked and the, uh, the Beverly Hills police made a, a statement, we're investigating whether, uh, this, whether this was a, a biased motive uh, crime. Only YouTube at the press conference asked, well, isn't it intuitive that if the Torahs are, are pulled out of drawers and, and spewed all over, yeah. strewn all over the, the, the seats and torn, yeah. isn't that a biased motive? I mean, could there be something that was more biased? Desecrating motive? a Torah doesn't, it's not, there's no jewelry in it. It's purely, purely to desecrate. Exactly. A biblical text. Exactly. Yeah. And by the way, that isn't the first uh, anti-Semitic act, which was attempted to be downplayed here by authorities last year wow. this past year right and people who would get so freaked out like happened in europe a few years ago if somebody does a caricature that's an anti-islamic caricature right and everybody like goes crazy and people got killed and there's riots and charlie hebdo and all of that but they'll let the same thing happen to a jewish religious symbol yes. and not say anything right right that's pretty appalling. Well, we're living in a culture now. I know that this is the case in the UK and the US. Let me take one more sip. We're living, <coughs> sorry, we're living in, in a, a political condition where uh, political correctness makes uh, Jewish victimhood taboo. Mm -hmm. And that the, the idea that uh, brown skinned people would have a contender for, the uh, for, victim. for, for victimhood. Uh, as you say, ultimate mm -hmm. victimhood. Um, and so if something's happening uh, against Jews, there's inherent in the system, which is designed to, uh, to play up discrimination against brown-skinned people. There's a, a, a tendency to downplay what happens against Jews. And, of course, and, the irony and, in Israel is that half of Israel are brown-skinned people. So it's really not a color-based thing. 
it's because half of Israelis are out of the Middle East. So, yeah. And I'm going to bet you that Abraham yeah. didn't have uh, blonde hair and blue eyes either, but that's going back a little bit. So we're Middle Eastern people. But yeah, I hear you. And like, how dare we tout ever six million Jews being killed because what, we're trying to be the ultimate victims? Like, we got to move over now. Or to downplay the fact that uh, my DNA and your DNA literally goes back to the Garden of Eden. <laughs> I don't know about that, but yeah. But definitely, yeah. And even if it doesn't, mm -hmm. okay? I mean, I look at the DNA tests and, and I've done them and I know the people you who have. are involved with them. Yeah, yeah. And and I guess I'm 100% Ashkenazi and my family happens to go back to the Middle East. But if somebody converted to Judaism, which means they are just as much a Jew as I am, their DNA mm -hmm. didn't change. So even if they've got Irish Scottish DNA, but they're part of the Jewish people, they're part of the Jewish people. So yeah, yeah there is definitely something to that, especially right. when it comes to right. the denial of us as being connected to the biblical Jews, which is something that others will say. Right. The Jews of today have no relationship to those biblical Jews who lived in the land of Israel. Mm -hmm. So yes, it can definitely be used for that, but you know, but but like everything, it's also got to be used to you know a certain degree. I think it also can be used to get people who were forced out of Judaism, the Anusim of Portugal and of Spain. Yes. If they have seen that they have Jewish DNA, there should be some kind of fast track to get them back into mainstream Judaism because mm -hmm. they were forced mm -hmm. out of it. Yes. And that's all halachically, according to Jewish law, that there is place for that. The Anusim from Spain, you're saying? From Spain, from the Iberian Peninsula during right. the Inquisition. There's yeah. a lot of Jews who were forced to hide yes. their Judaism. Yes. Many yes. of them now want to come and rejoin the tribe. And I think there should be definitely accommodations for those. But right. but in the general, the DNA isn't... And if, you're, if your genes don't show you from the Middle East, you're not Jewish, you know, it's a lot more complicated than that. It's a lot yes. more nuanced. But yes. yeah, but, but there, there's a lot of proof that, uh, that we have come home to the place that we came from. You know, if not every individual, then definitely en masse. And, uh, and I think that that's really important. I think what you're doing is super important. And I'm glad that my listeners tuned in today. If they want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? Well, a good way is uh, by uh, liking on Facebook or, sub or, or putting your email address in uh, on, the, on the YouTube website. Great. Um, uh, follow us on Twitter. Sharing it with other people that you know. Get them to join also. Yes, yeah. by all means. By all means. Okay. Um, and uh, we, we encourage people to become... Uh, 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 viewers mm -hmm. on YouTube. Okay. They can click subscribe in that way. Uh, it, it's important for people who are concerned about the condition of Western civilization to follow those who are rising to power uh, on anti-Semitism mm -hmm. throughout the world today. Also, guys, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. I go into YouTube, and if you see that there's material there, information there, interviews there that are making the point that you would like to make, then when you go, let's say, on a comment section, you don't have to do like a whole thesis in your comment. You can just send them to YouTube and say, listen, guys, if you're really interested in seeing the other side, there's some guy, there's a guy there, Scott Jacobs, who's done a lot of this homework already mm -hmm. and send them to you. They don't have to mm -hmm. try and make the argument on their own if you've already made it for them. They can just send people to your channel and use you as a resource. That's right. That's Which right. is very important. Yeah. You yeah. put so, a lot of work into that. Some of the top luminaries who you would consider mm -hmm. in, in the area of Hasbara, Yaakov Katz from, right. from the Jerusalem Post, they've all been featured on YouTube mm -hmm. at one, one point or another, right. uh, arguing uh, Israel's point of view, mm -hmm. uh, especially in, uh, under political duress right. during the Obama era. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, like, I have one or two things to say on my own, but very often I don't need to say them. I'll just send people to Eugene Kontorovich or Carolyn Glick or, yeah. or all these, I mean, Harold yeah. Road or all these amazing Harold people who Road, can make yeah. the case a whole lot better than I can and yes. go read them and go listen to them. Yes, yeah, Harold Road uh, has been, fe all, all those people, Carolyn right. Glick, they, they've yeah, all been, they've been, been part of the... the They're the, all there. You've got a bank. Yes. You, you have a resource and that yes. and people should be using YouTube as a resource. They, yeah, so. absolutely. I, I welcome them too and, and remind them that YouTube is a user-sponsored enterprise without user uh, uh, contributions uh, will cease to exist. Okay. And we don't want that to happen. No. Okay. No. Scott Jacobs, thank you for being in Los Angeles when I happen to be here. Eve Harrow. <laughs> Eve Harrow from the Land of Israel and Rejuvenation Show. Thank oh. you for appearing on YouTube. It's my pleasure. This is what I do. So uh, I'm going to keep doing it. Good. 
So I can at least go to sleep tonight and say, almost on every single day, I did something for the Jewish people today. Makes me sleep just a little bit better, even though there's so much to do. Okay, thank you everybody for tuning in. Eve Harrow, Rejuvenation on the Land of Israel Network. Thank you once again to Ben and to Tabitha and to all the guys who, um, who helped make this happen. And uh, have a great week, everybody. I'm sure it won't be boring because it seems to never be. Uh, and take care, everyone. And I will be back, God willing, next week. So uh, God goodbye willing. for sure. now. You're listening to the Land of Israel Network at thelandofisrael.com.